Hello everyone and welcome to Inastava. This is an English lesson for the second grade of high school and our topic today is unusual schools. Our names are Sandra and Anna and will be your teachers today. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to understand the text about unusual schools, answer the questions, describe your mobile school, and give the reasons for your choice. For today's lesson, you need your notebook, something to write with, and some device with the internet access. Hopefully, you all know that you can stop the video at any time you need. Let's start this lesson with the question on the slide. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to attend a school in another country? Would you like to go to similar school you are in right now or completely different one? How would it look like? Would it be a big building with a lot of students and classrooms? What about its equipment? What do you think of? Desks and chairs, whiteboards, libraries, school canteen. Pause the video and answer the questions. Most of you have probably thought about big buildings with large classrooms and different facilities. But this is not always the case. In many countries, there is not enough money to build a school. So classes are held in a variety of locations. Some areas are affected by natural disasters, such as earthquake, floods, or droughts. All children have the right to go to school and learn. But as you know, education is very important if you want to help children who haven't got the same opportunities. Schools around the world may be different or they may be similar, but they are all places designed for learning. Every country has a different approach to education and ideas of the best philosophy for schools and students. No matter which region or country we are living in, we must preserve our education system. Stop the video and think about differences and similarities of schools around the world. The possible differences among schools might be schooling system, school timetable and duration, educational resources, class sizes or school uniforms. Despite all these differences, schools around the world would have similarities too. At the end of the day, teachers across the globe have similar goals and aspirations. They all want what is best for their students. All schools have the same strategy considered children's right to learn, regardless of who they are, where they live, or how much money their family has. Let's move on and think of the reasons why some children cannot go to school. Pause the video and write possible reasons why some children cannot go to school. You probably think of Poverty, money, disabilities, war, violence, cultural barriers, weather conditions, natural disasters, or COVID-19. The last reason is the one we are all affected by. Coronavirus is changing the way we live at the moment and how the school around the world are being held. In order to become more familiar with examples how and where children learn, let's take a look at three unusual schools around the world. Pause the video and go to provided link. 
Read the text Three Unusual Schools Around the World. Read carefully since you have questions after reading. After reading the text Three Unusual Schools Around the World, pause the video and copy the questions in your notebook and answer them. In case you don't remember the text, you can read it again. Now it's time to check your answers. Question number one. Why was the concept of floating school launched? It was launched in 2002 because of monsoon season in Bangladesh when two-thirds of the country is underwater. Question number two. How many students are there in the boat classroom? There are 30 to 35 students in the boat classroom. Question number three. What are the boat schools equipped with? They are equipped with mini libraries, laptops, internet connection and solar plant panels. Question number four. When was the Green School in Bali opened? The Green School in Bali was opened in 2008. Question number five. What material did they use to build the school? They used bamboo as a material to build the school. Question number six. What is the biobus? It is the bus which runs on biodiesel made from cooking oil and it drives children to school and back. Question number seven. How are students selected in School of the Future? They are selected through a lottery process. Question number eight. Is there a classic library there? No, there isn't. They have an interactive learning center where information is digital. And the question number nine. What is the school goal? Its goal is to prepare students for future career. Let's move on. There is another task for you. Pause the video and go to the provided link. Your task is to answer whether the sentences are true or false. Hope you did the task well. Let's continue with another activity. It's a listening task about high school experiences. Before you hear four people talking about their schooling experiences, go to this link and match the words and phrases with their definitions. You can use QR code too. This activity will help you to understand what they are talking about. Let's continue with the task. Here are the questions you should answer after you have listened to the students' experiences. Copy the questions in your notebooks and answer them. I'm Emmanuel. My school is called School in a Box. School in a Box transforms any outdoor space into a school. It is a large box, more like an open shelter, containing everything we need. Pens, pencils, notebooks, textbooks, boards, and even CD players. The metal box is designed to store the SIB kit material safely. I come from Haiti, and in 2010, Haiti was destroyed by earthquake. We were left without homes and schools. Believe me, you don't know what you had until it's gone. We couldn't recognize our town. It was terrible. Thanks to school, we have psychosocial support activities helping us to overcome this terrible experience. For me, school is a safe haven. I like to read and write, but I'm not so good at maths. I know this kind of school is a temporary learning space. It will be used until my school is rebuilt. Till then, I will finish my education. I'm Annika. I'm a student and I live in Göteborg. I go to a special school. We study in groups in different learning spaces. There is no traditional classroom setup with desks and chairs just large learning spaces. Spaces in this school are separated by subtle borders with a unique and creative design. There is a cozy place for everyone, room with a trampoline for hyperactive children, a bench law design. The school design aims to foster creativity in children. 
Round spaces for relaxation and a wide spiral staircase greatly contribute to the education process. I'm Amal from Pakistan. I live in a slum and my parents can't afford me to go to school. Thanks to charities and foreign organizations, my friends and I can go to school. It's not a building, it's a bus, equipped with benches, desks and a large blackboard. The bus picks up children from different areas of the city. As many as 160 students study inside the bus in four shifts of two hours each. Each student is taught on an individual basis. We have strict rules in the bus. No loud talking, no standing up, no singing and no making faces. You're expected to sit, whisper to your bus buddy and learn. My name is John. I go to micro school in Toronto with an average class size of 12 mixed age students. We are often split into small groups or taught by two or more teachers. The focus is on personalized experiential and project based learning, as well as technology and innovation. Teachers teach us to be active, independent thinkers and learners. They differentiate their lessons and styles to provide a personalized program for every student. I like French language and what I like most is that my teacher teaches me beyond grammar drills, fostering a real appreciation for the language. Let's check your answers. Question number one. Why did they open school in a box in Haiti? Haiti was destroyed by earthquake and students were left without homes and schools. Question number two. How do they help children to overcome earthquake consequences? They help children to overcome terrible experience by giving them psychosocial support in the school. Question number three. Where is school in a box kit saved? It is saved in a specially designed metal box. Question number four. How do classrooms in Sweden look like? Classrooms are designed like open space. Number five. What is the aim of specially designed school interior in Sweden? The aim is to force the students' creativity. Number six. What type of school do poor children of Pakistan attend? Poor children of Pakistan attend schools on wheels. Question number seven. How is each student taught in school on wheels? Each student is taught on an individual basis. Question number eight. What are the rules in the school of wheels? The students are not allowed to be loud or to stand up, sing or make faces. Question number nine. What is a micro school? A micro school is a school where teachers work with a small group of students. And last question, question number 10. What do teachers teach students in Toronto? Teachers teach their students to be active, independent learners. Hope you have learned a lot about unusual schools, but now, Let's do some task not so serious one. It deals with fun facts about schools around the world. There are eight sentences and eight countries. So let's have fun. And let's check the answers. A school in the Philippines is made entirely of recycled pop bottles. The largest school in the world in terms of number of students is in India. In 2014, there was an elementary school in Italy that only had one teacher and one student. The children in the Netherlands start school on their fourth birthday, so there's always someone new in class. Students in South Korea are expected to stay and help clean and tidy the classroom when lessons are over. In Russia, children always start school on Knowledge Day, September the 1st, even if it's a weekend or a holiday. 
in a remote area of Colombia, kids have to travel to school on a zip line. France has the shortest school year from August to June and also the longest school day. Our final task is to design a mobile school. While designing your school, think of the description, what it looks like, and give at least three reasons for your alternative school. Why it has to be a mobile school? How would you organize it? What equipment do you think is important to put inside? Also, think about the way you would organize teaching classes and the subjects students would be taught. Your description should not be longer than 175 words. To help you with this task, there is a checklist. Think of your school's description. Check if you wrote three reasons why it is necessary to open the school, if you designed the organization of the school and the subjects to be taught, if your homework has an introduction body and conclusion, and if you checked spelling and grammar. At the end of the lesson, you have exit ticket. Write down one fact you knew before the lesson and one fact you have learned during the lesson. Send your exit ticket to your teacher together with the written task. That's all for today. Stay safe and healthy. Bye! Bye!